This question is about trigonometric identities and solving equations. The first part, it tells us um, that starting from the formula sine A plus cos B proves the following. So that's straight out of your textbook that you should have learned that and you can use the formula booklet. Deduce the following. This is a simple application of part A. Now this part here, part C, students will find difficult, but I want to show you that it's way easier than you would have thought. Let's do part A to start with. Firstly, the first thing to write, to get yourself two of these easy four marks, tan of A plus B, by its very definition, must be sine of A plus B divided by cos of A plus B. It must be true, that. Now, you can use your formula booklet to find out what these are. These are in the formula booklet, and it's sine A cos B plus cos A sine B divided by cos A cos B subtract sine A sine B. Now, there's no reason in the world why you can't get those two marks by writing that. It is a case of using the definition of tan, and then it is a case of using your formula booklet to expand out the addition formula. It is very straightforward. Everyone should get two marks there. Now the next bit is just something you learn. Um, it's part of a proof of this formula, and we've uh, this has been done in the in the teaching of this. You divide everything through by cos a cos b. Now why? Well, just look at the first side. If we want to fix this to look like tan a, if we divided by cos b, that would remove the cos b, and if we divided by cos a, sine a over cos a would give me tan a. Does it work here? Well, cos A over cos A removes the cos A, and sin B over cos B gives me the tan B. So you just have to learn this is the method to do. So it's probably best to just write a line of work in there. So you would divide everything you see by cos A cos B. This is just to guarantee you that method mark. Okay, and then show some cancellation. Cos A over cos B is 1. Cos A over cos A is 1. Cos A over cos A is 1. Cos B over cos B is 1 and um, then the rest are to do with tan. So then you could simply write that as simply tan A plus tan B over 1 subtract tan A tan B. You must learn this. These are easy four marks for question 8 in the exam. Next, deduce that the following is true. Okay, so let's go back to what we've been told. Okay, so because deduce means using what you've just proven. So we're going to, I'm going to copy this just so that we can make it absolutely clear how easy part B's marks are. Now, we have to deduce the above there using the following. Now, it's very straightforward for three marks. All you've got to say is you've got to say let A equal theta, okay, and then we're going to let B equal pi by 6. Okay, and we're going to use this formula here. So therefore, tan of theta plus pi by 6 must be equal to tan theta plus tan pi by 6 over 1 minus tan theta tan pi by 6. Simple for the first mark. Now, type tan pi by 6 in your calculator when your calculator is in radians mode and you get root 3 over 3. So substitute that in tan theta plus root 3 over 3 so, uh, over 1 minus tan theta root 3 over 3. Now, it's kind of like what you're looking for but it's not quite there yet. Right? Now, this is unconvincing where students went from here to the final line. 
just think what you want, okay? You want the, this to be 1, okay? And you want this here to be root 3 tan theta. If you multiply that by root 3, that would fix that. If you multiply that by root 3, well, root 3 times root 3 is 3, and 3 over 3 is 1. So what you need to do to top and bottom is multiply everything by root 3. So multiply top and bottom, or you can think of that as multiplying by root 3 over 3. And then you get yourself what you're looking for. You get yourself root 3 tan theta plus 1 over root 3 subtract tan theta, which um, is exactly what you want, just rearranging the top round. And it was as simple as that. So just have a look at what you're look, trying to get and just reverse engineer it backwards. Or in future, you could just remember the simple trick multiplying by root 3. Now, the last part is where students struggled. Hence or otherwise, solve the following. We want to solve it between 0 and pi. We want to give our answers as multiples of pi. The keyword here is hence. How on earth does that look anything like what we've been doing? If we go back, does, for example, this, this, or this have anything to do with what we've previously been doing? Well, I'll tell you right now, that one doesn't. What about these two? Well, look, hold on a sec. 1 plus root 3 tan theta, root 3 subtract tan theta, that's exactly this. So if we divided both sides of this by root 3 subtract tan theta, that whole bracket here, we're going to divide by this bracket, we would have 1 plus root 3 tan theta over root 3 subtract tan theta is equal to tan of pi minus theta. Okay? Now, that looks familiar because that there is it, from what we did in part B, tan of theta plus pi by 6. So the only thing we can do here is replace this by tan of theta plus pi by 6, right? And we know that's equal to tan of pi minus theta. Now, um, just to say up here, at this stage, many students try to expand this using the addition formula and get a quadratic with tans, and, and they got the right answer, and well done to them. But it was way easier than that. Because if tan of something is equal to tan of something else, well, one thing you know for sure is that one of the solutions to that would be if both brackets are the same. So one solution to this would be theta plus pi by 6 must equal pi subtract theta. That's got to be one solution if the two brackets are the same. There could be other solutions because tan is periodic, etc. And there's other places where it could equal, but that is certainly one solution. So if you add theta to both sides here and you subtract pi by 6 from both sides, you would get yourself that 2 theta would be equal to 5 pi by 6, and theta would be 5 pi by 12. And that's one of your answers. Now, is that the, the final answer? Well, it does say give your answer, so there's a hint there must be more. Well, how would you find the other solutions? Well, you know that tan is periodic. Um, every pi, it repeats itself, okay? So every pi on it repeats itself. So for example, just the normal tan graph looks like that. And this point here is pi. Every pi it repeats itself. Okay, it looks exactly like before. So if we add pi to either one of these, we won't change its value. Okay, it will have the same value. So we could try and solve. I'm just going to take that away now. We could try and solve um, the solution you'd get if you did tan of theta plus pi plus pi by 6 is equal to tan of pi minus theta. You know there could be a solution there. So this would give you that theta plus this plus this would be 7 pi by 6 would equal pi subtract theta. Add theta to both sides, subtract 7 pi by 6 you get 2 theta is equal to pi um, subtract 7 pi by 6, which would be negative pi by 6, and you get theta is equal to negative pi by 12. 
Okay, now that's not in our range 0 to pi, so we would have to ignore that one. The next one we could do, we could say, well, what if we added the pi to this side? Because that wouldn't change the value. And you would end up getting theta plus pi by 6 would be this uh, added by pi. So you'd get 2 pi minus theta. So add theta to both sides, 2 theta, and subtract the pi by 6. So you would get 11 uh, pi by 6. And then theta would be that divided by 2, which would be 11 pi by 12. And that is in your range 0 to pi, so there are actually two solutions. And the way we got it is we just knew that tan is periodic by pi, so I could add pi to this one or this one and see uh, what the other answers are. If I added pi to both, then it wouldn't. I'd still get this answer here by the way equations were. So I added pi to one, see if that was a good answer. Added pi to the other, see if that was a good answer and then I found one of them good. If I added 2 pi to either side, I'd get outside the range. So that's how you get those six marks there.